there is truly nothing better in politics than watching Republicans and conservatives get embarrassed on Fox News. It doesn't happen all that often because, you know, it's a safe space for them. They don't get much pushback on Fox News because the hosts are on their side. But every once in a while, Fox News will have on a Democratic guest or something along those lines, and then they'll be hit with the facts, the truth, the good arguments, and then these hosts are kind of stunned. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Normally they get away with it, but not uh, on the occasion. And so I'm happy to report that that's what we're talking about today. I have two clips from Fox News, specifically the show The Five, with uh, the amazing, the brilliant Jessica Tarlov, who's one of the few Democrats on the network. And they were talking about two different, uh, very important topics in both of these clips, but I think that they're both amazing. And it kind of shows you this a little bit of embarrassment for the Republicans because, you know, once they actually fish push back on their, their claims, it doesn't go well for them, typically. So here's the first clip of Jessica Tarlov, and then we'll discuss after and look at the second clip. To say that Joe Biden is the threat to democracy, considering what Donald Trump and his band of lawyers tried to pull off in 2020 is complete insanity. I mean, he dispatched lawyers all over the country to overturn a free and fair election. A lot of them have pled out to doing this. A lot of them are still to face trial. And he's doing his darndest to make sure that he doesn't have to show up in any of these courtrooms because he's definitely afraid of what's going to happen there. And as many of these January 6th He's not Participant, afraid of anything. Oh, big man, not afraid, whatever. I know him. Okay, not. I'm sure you, you do know him, and I don't know him, but I don't think that that man who doesn't want to even sleep in a hotel bed wants to go to jail. So don't refute what happened. We know about Sidney Powell. We know about John Eastman, who just got disbarred. The Rudy Giuliani, who's obviously not in very good position, how the mighty have fallen. So, um, yeah, I think that clip is, like, kind of funny. Because it just shows you the insanity of Fox News and like MAGA. So just for some context, just right before that, uh, the Republican hosts around Jessica were trying to make the claim that Biden is as much of a threat to democracy as Donald Trump is, which intuitively is obviously insane. We can go down the list of why that's an insane thing to say. But Jessica's like, no, 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 wrong. Uh, you know, Trump did all of these things. And his lawyers went around the country trying to argue to overturn a free and fair election of which the American people spoke loud and clear. And then, you know, and she's like, you know, Trump is obviously terrified of going to jail. And Janine Perot uh, jumps in and says, oh, he's not terrified. No, he's not. He's not terrified of anything. I know him. He's not scared. Do you see, like, how insane that is? <laughs> right? Like, they are so embedded into the MAGA cult that they view... Trump is like a god. I mean, we knew this already. But to think that Trump isn't terrified at the prospect of spending the rest of his life in prison is absurd. He's not Superman, right? He is facing, you know, 91 felony charges if he's convicted on all in the maximum, 700 plus years in prison, right? He is terrified. He is absolutely scared. And for like Janine Perot and all of her fellow conservative hosts to be like, yeah, nodding along, clapping, saying, no, 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 I think he's doing just fine. He's not worried when he's going on these like multi-page rampages on True Social <laughs> is really, um, for lack of a better word, silly. I think that's the best way I describe it. Silly is kind of the, the vibe I'm getting from that uh, interaction there. Like, look, for all the MAGA Republicans who might be watching, which I imagine is like zero, um, if Donald Trump is not scared as they're claiming over there at Fox News. He's perfectly confident and he wants all this to happen and he, he's not worrying at all. Then why do Trump and his lawyers continue to try to push back the trials? Like just yesterday, Donald Trump's third attempt this week to push back his New York City uh, criminal trial was denied. This is the 10th plus time that Donald Trump has tried to push back this trial. You know, if somebody is not scared of something, whatever, you know, realm it may be in, typically they're not trying <laughs> 10 plus times to push it back. Maybe, and here's just a thought, maybe Donald Trump knows he's in trouble, knows that the evidence against him is overwhelming, knows that every single one of these indictments against him, no matter what jurisdiction it is, because there are four, uh, he knows that they are bad news for him, that if he is uh, faced by a jury of his peers, that it likely will not go his way. So to Janine, if you're out there, 
factor that in. The fact that your guy is trying to push back these trials of which you say that he's not scared of. That's a tough hill to climb, I think, when you're trying to make that argument. And I also just want to comment on the absurdity of the claim that Biden is as bad for democracy as Donald Trump is, if not worse, you know, what they were is what they were claiming on uh, Fox News. That is ridiculous. Not once in Biden's career has he done something at all to the level of Donald Trump in the in the realm of attacking our democracy, right? Not even close. Like, I wouldn't even label anything Biden has done in his career to attack our democracy. So to try to put them on an equal playing field is insane. Like, we we know what Trump did on January 6th and the days leading up to it. He was openly and knowingly spreading lies on Twitter. He was trying to get the Department of Justice to send fake letters to different states saying that they've identified irregularities in the election, but they knew that obviously wasn't the case. He was calling different state legislators and state uh, officials to try to pressure them into either calling a special session to try to decertify election results or just call them to say, hey, you need to find me some votes. And then, you know, among the other things, like pressuring Mike Pence as well to try to reject the votes on January 6th, among other things, then there was the actual day of January 6th where he fanned the flames of hate, incited an insurrection, and then sat in the White House for over 180 minutes and did nothing as the violence unfolded. Matter of fact, he was like cheering the on via testimony under oath from the January 6th committee's report. But the fact that, you know, they're on Fox and they're trying to make this argument with a straight face is so telling. Like, it, it kind of ties into the point about Janine and, you know, these MAGA hosts being in a cult because you you have to be to believe that. There, no sane individual is is logically and realistically making the argument that Biden and Trump are at all on a level, level playing field in this matter. They, they're so far gone. And this is why Fox News is like such trash. I mean, it's just a garbage network. But this is, they're just so far gone. There's no rescuing these folks and having like a middle ground conversation like, hey, maybe Donald Trump should not have done that, right? They're like, no, no, no. He did nothing wrong and he's not scared of the repercussions. Like, give me a break. But regardless, I do think that was a little bit of an embarrassing moment for Janine Pirro. She'll never admit it, of course. But she looked a little humbled, a little humbled when the camera panned to her and she didn't have much of a response to the fact that, yeah, Trump doesn't even want to sleep in a hotel bed, let alone sitting in prison, maybe Rikers in New York following his uh, his criminal trial that's scheduled to start on Monday. But <laughs> again, as I kind of said at the beginning of the video, always so fun to watch these like conservative hosts just kind of be like, oh, well, yeah, okay, maybe she has a point. So anyway, let's move on to the second clip. And this one is not necessarily Jessica embarrassing the Republicans, but more so the Republicans embarrassing themselves. You'll see what I mean in a minute, here is that second clip from The Five. Interesting that this came out yesterday and we had the ruling taking us back to 1864 in Arizona about abortion because Latino votes in, in Nevada and Arizona are what are going to be really crucial there. 57% of Hispanics say abortion should be legal in all or most cases. And Donald Trump is out there defending his stance of you leave it to the states. He did say today, I won't support a federal abortion ban. He has said before that he supports a 15 or 16 week ban. So I, I don't know if he's going to be consistent with that. But the Democrats are going to make that a centerpiece of this conversation as they should. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's it. Joe did not look good there. No, it looked bad. I'm looked glad that's bad. what you took from what I said. No, I was just, yeah. Well, I, I know you zoned out. I did. I can tell I when it's happening. Think about what I was going to eat. Yeah. Up next. So, uh, ugh, my immediate reaction is I kind of want to cringe. Like, I have like a, like, I makes you want to sit up straight because Greg at the end there was like trying to make a joke at the end of the clip and it just didn't land. It just wasn't funny. You know, Fox tries their hand at humor all the time and you're just kind of sitting there with a straight face like, why are you doing that? <laughs> why, are you, why are you trying to be funny? This is not funny. That was not funny. So I think my immediate reaction is like, oh, just, you know, oh, kind of makes you shrug a little bit. But I also think that this clip is telling for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, she's right. OK, you know, these swing states like Nevada and Arizona in all the swing states and quite frankly, the overwhelming majority of American states, if not all of them, support abortion rights. They support reproductive freedoms for women in all cases or most cases. Right. 
And this is especially going to be present in states like Arizona, states like Nevada, states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, North Carolina. You know the list of swing states we're talking about here. Uh, This is going to be a present issue. The Democrats and Joe Biden are going to make it a present issue because it deserves to be present. It deserves to be at the top of mind for so many people, uh, you know, even if they're not impacted by it, right? So she's right to bring up the polling and the fact that what Arizona did with this, like, you know, allowing this 1864 law to go into effect is going to be so detrimental for Republicans in that state. There's no way to... uh, look at it a different way. They're already trying to like run away from the decision as fast as they can. Uh, trying to like say, oh, I support a common sense solution, whatever, right? So she's right. I think it's going to play a massive factor. And I think the Democrats are going to lean into it heavily. But also, I think that this is um, kind of representative of Fox News and MAGA as a whole. Like, she is articulating a very smart view on electoral politics, on abortion, and they don't really have a response, just like Janine Perot did not have a response in the first one. Like, Greg is like, oh, I was, you know, I wonder what I'm going to eat later today. He's zoned out. And Jessica's, you know, kind of laying out a very important electoral strategy for 2024. They're just on two different playing fields, right? You know, the Democrats, and I think this is representative of politics as a whole as well, but the Democrats are on the side of like, Let's think about this deeply. Let's look at the nuance of what we're actually discussing here and look at impacts and see how X affects Y and so on. And Republicans are like, oh, I wonder how, you know, that chandelier got up there or I wonder what I'm going to eat today or I wonder what Trump posted on True Social, you know, in the last five minutes, right? It's just a different playing field. And I would rather have the people who like think deeply about issues in government, aka the Democrats and Joe Biden, than the people who are more concerned with, you know, what's Trump saying now on the, the Republican side, which seems to be a lot of the candidates that are running on the Republican side in 2024. But I think that both of these clips embarrass the Republicans in different ways. In the first clip, you know, Jessica's kind of laying down the hammer, laying down the truth and kind of hitting back at her fellow conservative hosts who are making such a terrible argument, might I add. And in the second clip, the Republicans are embarrassing themselves. They're kind of like up in the clouds thinking about something else as opposed to the very important conversation that's happening around the country right now. But as I mentioned, it warms my heart. When I see stuff like this, I love it. I could watch clips like this of Republicans embarrassing themselves on Fox News all day, every day. It's just so great. And I I know that you folks love this too because how can you not? If you're a Democrat and you're watching this, how could you not? So anyway, folks, that's going to wrap up the video for now. I just really wanted to show you these two clips. So make sure to subscribe down below. Just click that button. It goes such a long way. Also, drop a like, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Share the video with anybody you think needs to see it. And as I always say at the end of these videos, if we work hard, we persevere, we'll get Joe Biden reelected in 2024.